your identity as an artist matters, but please take it from me, don't rush it. Everyone's heard about how important it is to have an art style, right? It's something that feels so elusive most of the time. It's the thing that seems to make people successful. It's the thing that makes you wanted. It's the thing that makes you desired, right? How do I find my art style? But what I'm talking about today is something a little bit bigger than that. And I think it includes the whole art style debate, if you will. As an artist, something that I feel like we don't realize is important and this is probably partially because of the internet, is how much your own unique identity and voice matters. I was speaking with a friend who is actually removed from the art community, and they helped me realize something that was very important. They were drawn to art because of the way that it allowed people to express what they wanted to share with their world, their own truth. And so I started to think about my own artwork and my own journey and noticed that it's been quite a while since I have actually consistently created work that was from the deepest parts of me. I've been so caught up in studying and training and improving and teaching and I didn't realize there was this part of my soul that was yearning to share all of these things that I have experienced and learned over the past few months alone in my work and I wasn't doing it. And I, it just hit me that that was a huge source of the pain that I have because as some of you may know, the OGs on my YouTube channel, art is what gave me life. It is what gives me life. It gives me a source of energy and validation that is just unprecedented, uncomparable, and it always works. The problem with the internet is that it causes you to depend on external validation, right? And so you begin to slowly tweak yourself without even knowing that that's what you're doing. And that's when things get really sinister, right? Because when you don't know something's happening, you don't know what's going on. It can keep going for years and years and years until the point where it's basically your identity. And now you have to do the huge job of undoing all of that stuff to find out who you really are underneath. A video I saw recently that did really well here on YouTube, and I'm so happy for that, is called how I put down my phone and started making art I cared about, create or be consumed by QR bits. And it was an incredible video. It shares a unique story about how that slow devolution, if you will, happens where you begin to step outside of yourself and act from this place of just reactivity and chase for something that always used to come from within. Artists, we can't really explain our passion. We can't really explain what we do a lot of times, right? It's just expression. It's the first definition for why you're an artist or what value it gives you when you're asked. At least that's always what it was when I was growing up. So if it isn't clear already, I definitely highly recommend you check that video out. I will leave it in the description and in the pinned comments. People are caught up in the idea that we need exposure. I need exposure to be able to sustain myself as an artist, right? It's even passed around that an art career in the art industry in film or video games isn't enough. You've got to do your own side hustle and get an audience so that you can get more jobs that way. It seems like we're suffering from this chronic anxiety of trying to make sure that we're good enough and measure up and can convince enough people to follow us and look at our stuff so that we can feel like we belong and have a place in the art world so that we can keep doing art. But I think that's so backwards. We are the ones who decide if we want to do art or not, right? We did it for ourselves at the very first time. We did it because we it, we thought it was cool. We thought it was impressive. We thought it was fun. Whatever it is, it was most likely for us. I think it's actually reversed our path on how to figure out who we are as an artist. What is our artistic identity? 
And now we're looking at brand, right? And that word, it gets so tossed around a lot because it's the thing these days, right? Everybody's their own brand. And I don't wholly disagree with that. And it has a lot of good applications in the more business advertising sense, which is very important if you want to have your own art career, especially as an independent artist. But it just takes the soul out of it. It feels cold and corporate. I like the word identity because it's personal, right? A brand feels like it's something external, something that you have to maintain and check. But identity it's self-sustaining. An identity exists because it exists. An identity is just a uniqueness from the rest, right? It's something that should be natural. When you think that you have to do something or become better or change yourself in some way to be received well, accepted, desired, then you give up your identity for this kind of, I don't even know what to call it, kind of like an abomination of an identity, this thing that's constantly swaying and changing with the wind that has no form. It's whatever it needs to be based off of its environment. And I say all of this as someone who has spent a lot of time in that state. And boy, can I tell you, it is not fun. Posting online sometimes makes you feel and assume that you're not good enough when you see the likes and the results aren't as good as the last post or what you expected after this much time. And you begin to assume your own value based off of that and you begin to change yourself and shift things. And I feel like that can be really toxic and destabilizing. I think we should prioritize the art and discovering ourselves first, not the job and the stability. And it sounds really like, ah, yeah, woo woo. It sounds super hippie and idealistic, but I've got a few things that might make you change your mind because I really do believe that this is a practical way to approach being an artist. So take consistency, for example. It's pretty clear that not just in the art community, but any career, consistency is important. When you're not consistent, people don't really show up anymore. People move on with their lives as they should, right? But when you're consistent, what happens is that people begin to align themselves with you. So I'm going to put my heart out here and cut it open for you guys with this YouTube channel, right? As I continue to upload videos on a consistent basis, well, as I did in the past, people would align their schedules with mine. People would learn to draw with me. People would make their time to draw when I draw, right? People do this all the time with all kinds of YouTube channels. Saturday night, Sunday night, Wednesday night, a certain content creator might have a certain show or program or just a stream on and people adjust to that. So if you're not consistent, you're not going to have that huge leg up in the game because that builds brand trust, right? There we go into the more marketing side of things, the technical side of things. It builds an allegiance, right? When people connect with you, on an emotional level especially, it defies logic. They just stick around because they want to, because they love you, because they like how they feel when they're engaging with you and whatever you're creating. And so how are you going to be consistent if you continually change and shift with the rest of the world or what seems to be going on on a certain platform like Instagram? Because I can assure you, as someone who <laughs> has basically lived most of their life like Lane from Serial Experiments Lane, any of my uh, any anime watchers will know exactly what I'm talking about. The Internet, the online world is not an accurate description of reality. There are people who live very, very, very slow to medium paced lives who only work with what's around them and they don't bother looking and searching for anything outside of what is close at hand. So even when it comes to 
huh, I bought a new house. I need decorations. People will ask their friends. People will ask their colleagues. People will ask their coworkers, right? They'll see something on the way home from work. They'll see a stand somewhere and they'll get something from that. That's how people are. And when you decide to show up as yourself consistently, you're allowing that to begin to work for you and for you to build your own repertoire of clients. And here's another tidbit that's very, you know, scientific, if you will. It's very practical in any business or any industry. I learned this from another YouTube video I'll link. There's something called the price law or prices law. And that's that half of any population that is working towards a goal to produce a product or something of value will be responsible for 80 to 90 percent of the results and the other half will be responsible for 10 to 20 percent of the results anyone who has been in business for a while knows that there will always be a few big hits a few big clients repeat clients that are supporting you and then you have like a million other things that are making up the other chunk right look at apple trillion dollar company they have all kinds of different products but the iphone is still the backbone of the company that's where they make the most of their money nothing else has surpassed that in as long as the iphone has been out right so as an individual artist who has much less to worry about than a trillion dollar brand you're still held to the same standard. You still live in this world and this is how things work. Having something rock solid, something that grounds you, something that comes from within you that can be sustained naturally is key to having an identity. And then you get that consistency. Then you can have the stability that you're seeking instead of looking for the stability first to define you as an artist, to define you as a person. And so here's another big reason that this works. Storytelling. If you think about it, storytelling is the simplest form of entertainment. I don't care what it is, if it's comedy, if it's movies, if it's video games, it's just a story. It's an experience. Listening to a story literally is entertaining. A lot of you watch my videos for that same reason. When you are creating from your own identity from what you want to do from what makes you excited it creates a narrative and when you stick to that people want to stick around to see what happens and another fantastic youtuber who is japanese but his videos have subtitles most of the time i'll try to link him below he's talked about this as well as a key point people get excited when they know what's going to come next and they anticipate that and that takes time to build, but it's strong. So if you're consistently putting out artwork of a certain series, people are going to look forward to it. Looking forward to things is big. It's really big. It's a lot bigger than how much engagement you get in the first hour. It's a lot bigger than how many likes your top 10 have, right? These things go really far to solidifying and creating the illusion of stability that we're all after. You want to get that anticipation from your audience, from your viewers. That is what builds a recurring, stable engagement that you can interact with because people are wanting to track this story. We love stories. We like to find out how stories end. We've told stories since the beginning of time, right? We tell it verbally. We make paintings on the walls. We do whatever we can. I'm making this video. I'm showing you footage of me creating this piece of art and it's telling a narrative and you feel like you're here with me. It's storytelling. It's so exciting. We love to do it. It's how conversations can really sustain themselves, exchanging stories, learning. It is the simplest. When you boil down entertainment, it's just storytelling. So it goes even beyond just an individual piece of art or an animation or a film. It can go so, so much further. 
So I want to share some of my own L's that I've noticed with my own journey of taking on that storytelling process, building that narrative, but then kind of losing myself within it. So when my art career really took off was when I started to train and I decided to use a certain shade of pink for all of my sketches. That immediately set me apart from the rest. It immediately made me stand out. People were looking forward to the next pink sketch. People asked me, why do I draw in pink every day? However, as I started to improve and I started to make video content, looking at pink on a white screen was kind of hard to keep track of. People couldn't really see what I was doing. So I started to make adjustments and I would start sketching in grayscale or black or convert the pink sketch to black and white. And that helped. I kind of found like a middle ground there, but I was constantly trying to improve and I was looking so much at what other people were doing on any platform that I was also on that I kind of lost my way and just started doing illustrations just for the sake of it. They were still illustrations. They were still pretty unique. So fast forward to 2020, I made an illustration called Confusion and I loved every single minute of it. It was completely unique. It started off as a study, a stylized study, which I was also known for, and it just grew into something else. Everyone loves it. It didn't do that great when I posted it, but there's a certain admiration to that piece. Even people who've never met me before, when they see that piece, they always have something to say about it. After a while, I started getting even more intensely interested in improving my anatomy and my skills. I got very, very ashamed of myself for some reason. Once I started to connect with other artists who were very, very kind and enjoyed my own work, but I looked at theirs and their process and their skills and I just kind of put my head down and started to focus on improving and I wanted to increase my YouTube career as well, you know, and just get really good. So I kept making a few more big illustrations, but then something happened that would set the tone for the next couple of years. I made another illustration that was really in depth and it had a whole Egyptian vibe to it and just felt so cool to me, but it didn't do that well. It was something that I originally intended to be on a big wall, like something that was at least four foot um, in one dimension when printed. I remember one particular comment saying that, ah, I don't like this part specific. Why did you do that? And I remember another comment saying, ah, I can barely see anything. And I let Instagram, I let that format dictate who I was as an artist and I stopped making those types of illustrations. I got inspired again, though, in 2021 or 2022. The years are blurring still for me due to COVID. I made another illustration and it was something that I had been looking forward to for a long time. I'm a huge fan of the film and animation series called Ghost in the Shell. And I put my all into an illustration that I felt really expressed my admiration for the main character, Motoko, but also how I viewed her as ascending to something beyond even cyborg or synthetic humanity at a certain point because of the recent update on Netflix that had come out. But again, it wasn't received that well. And this time I even made an animation with it and put it to music, but it was just kind of bland. Now, granted, looking back, it did not really read very well as an image, and it was definitely something that wasn't very popular or easily consumed by the masses, but it got to me, and I stepped away from putting all that work into my illustrations again. These letdowns made me disconnect from myself. It made me look for what was working what was good? What did people want? And that, I believe, is the real reason. I have to come to terms with the fact that my Instagram account hasn't grown in a long time. It's sat at the same exact 
number bouncing up and down slightly every day, every week for a nearly a year now. And I have to take ownership that, yeah, Instagram is going through all kinds of crazy shit right now and ups and downs, um, trying to find their own identity in this world of fast paced video content. But I also began to just create stuff that didn't really look like it was from me. I mean, every most of my audience knows that, oh, yeah, that's that's Josh. That's how Josh draws. Right. That's how, you know, he, he draws the girls. Right. And he draws the stylized stuff, the Disney stuff. But even that really became very minimal. And I had changed my style so many times throughout this entire process, which had a lot. Don't get me wrong, has a lot of benefits and I don't regret that. But as a viewer, what are you here for? You know, I'm not sold out to teaching anatomy. I make a very specific, consistent type of sketch and illustration, but I don't go all in and pour my heart out and tell the stories that I want to tell. So why would you follow me? Right. Everyone has a reason that they follow someone. It's a personal reason. But if they don't have one, then why would they keep following you? Right. People, it sounds rough, but people are pretty cutthroat with who they decide to follow, especially now since we've been at this for years with all sorts of different social media rising and falling and people feel pretty overwhelmed. You guys yourself have told me that when I was asking what you wanted me to create on YouTube. You told me and shared that there's so many tutorials out, it feels like it's being shoved down your throat. And it's something I've heard echoed from professionals as well. Something I've heard from other content creators. And I'm thinking to myself, well, that's right. To be honest, anything under the sun you can imagine that you'd want to learn, you could probably find a video on it. But I think that this is mirroring a huge, huge transformation that's happening, not just with me, but with the art community that's been accelerated by the onset of advanced AI, advanced image generative processing. There's something more to this. I think what I want to do, at least, is alongside creating art that speaks to me and speaks my truth and speaks to others in a way that they can connect personally is that I want to share how to into it rather than the means by which to create. I want to share how do you connect back with yourself after this age of the internet and looking through art station and feeling dejected because your skills aren't the same as someone else's or you're not able to achieve the same level of success that someone else got. I know how it feels to look at someone's artwork and feel bad. Just the other day I was looking up references of art and I started to feel this tense, hot ball of anxiety in my stomach and I just stopped and said, you know what, maybe this isn't the right thing. And all of a sudden I find some references from Graffiti Studio that are exactly what I was looking for. Lighting, pose and everything. Shout out to them. Not sponsored, but I have invested in many of their references, their reference packs and use them a lot. And it just hit me like I don't need to look for the answer. I don't need to assume that I don't know what I'm doing. Just go for the ride. Go for what excites you. I'm even limiting how much I use filters in my artwork at different stages. I'm using the more basic ones in Photoshop and limiting myself to those most of the time trying to trust my own instinct, what I like better, because I'm tired of regretting something after I posted it because of a certain effect that I put. I'm tired of stressing and going back and forth saying, is this better? Is this filter better? Is this one better? How about this one compared to that one? How about that one? But when it's grayscale, maybe I can blend these two. It just I think most people like 2D images of artwork just because of the marks that are human that we make and constantly filtering that stuff kind of removes that magic. I've honestly seen some of you comment on one of my recent art posts. So I'm learning a lot. I'm learning a lot very rapidly. A lot of stuff that I feel like you don't really need to learn to be able to get this whole art thing right. but. At least I can share it with you all and at least someone out there 
can save some time. And I'm currently having a blast working on this illustration, and I can't wait to share it with you all on Instagram. Make sure to follow me there at ergo.josh, and I will see you in the next one. Keep drawing, and please stay positive if you can. Take care, everyone.